Okay, I'm going to start the PowerPivot installation procedure by logging into the SPDB3 database server. And we haven't used this server at all in the farm uh, deployment yet. This is a brand new server, has nothing installed on it. But the first thing we need to do is get the .NET 3.5 uh, code uh, up and running so that that's there when the SQL installer calls for it. So I'll go to, uh, to the dash of the server manager, click on the roles and features, and I'm going to click through here until I find .NET 3.5, so I'll click that on, and I'll tell it that if it wants to restart the server, that's fine, and we'll just let that run. Okay, so after some waiting, which you didn't have to wait through, the .NET Framework 3.5 is installed, so I'll just close that. In fact, I'll close all of this stuff. And I've already mounted the SQL Server media. So I'll just go ahead and run setup. And again, if you've ever run SQL Server setup, this is the same process, except that we'll branch off to installing PowerPivot for SharePoint, which is a pretty straightforward and well-engineered install. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do. So we'll click on installation, new standalone installation. Our setup support rules complete, so we'll just click OK there. And here we'll enter our product key, accept the terms, send feature usage. Again, we've got some product updates to install, so we'll go ahead and allow that. So now that our patches are done, we'll just go ahead and keep going through the installation. So on setup role, we'll choose PowerPivot for SharePoint. Now I'm going to clear the option to add a relational engine, because when I need a relational engine, I have my SPDB1 that I'm going to use, which is serving the rest of my SharePoint purposes. So I don't uh, I don't need a relational engine on this server. For the most part, in, when installing PowerPivot, everything gets pre-selected for you, which is convenient. And I'll just select the defaults on my uh, feature directories. On a production server, you might have a different volume where you're going to put your uh, content, but in this lab VM environment, everything's on the C drive. And I'll just keep clicking through. Now, I get the option to change the instance ID. I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as PowerPivot. And I can see there's nothing installed yet. So I'll click Next. And that looks fine. Now here's where I want to specify the user account that's going to run this, uh, run the analysis services instance. And in this case, it's going to be my uh, database account, not, not one of my SharePoint accounts. So I'll put that in, and browser is going to be installed. That'll be a startup automatic, and I do want that. Now here I have to specify which users have administrative permissions. Now I'm going to add myself because somebody has to be able to connect to this instance when we're all done. But I also want to add those couple of the BI account and the farm account because these are accounts that are going to connect to this instance in order to control it and impersonate users and do various things. So they do need to have these permissions. If you leave this off, then you're going to find that PowerPivot isn't going to work correctly. So don't forget. However, if you do forget, you can always just go into Management Studio and correct this later on. But if we do it here, then we'll be all set right from the get-go. So we'll just keep nexting through all this stuff at this point and install and we'll wait until the install is complete. And now our installation is complete, so we have succeeded on all of our lines, and at this point we have our PowerPivot for SharePoint instance, or Analysis Services for SharePoint instance is running. And we're going to go ahead and actually use this and uh, try it out. So first what we need to do is go into Central Administration, and in Application Management we'll take a look at Manage Service Apps. And within Excel Services, there's actually a setting right for this configuration. So it's called Data Model Settings. So we'll come in here and add server. And we just need to put in the, it says identifier for the SQL Server Analysis Service Server. Well, that's the server name and the instance name. So SPDB3 backslash power pivot. And I don't need a description because it's the only one. And at this point, we should be able to create a PowerPivot workbook and upload that. 
Okay, so I've created a Power Pivot workbook. I actually brought in a few million rows from a Contoso database. And you can see I have a very similar kind of functional test, a pivot table with a slicer. So I'm going to go ahead and save that up to the SharePoint site. I'll put it in the Documents folder along with my other tests. Go ahead and save that. And document is the right content type, so that's good. And then down here I can see it's uploading to SharePoint and uploading statuses. So that's that's working. We've uploaded our Power Pivot workbook, so let's go ahead and try it and see if it actually works. And there it comes up. Now it hasn't actually called up Power Pivot for SharePoint to open up the uh, book and present it yet or process it. So the real test will come when we change the slicer values because when we do that, Excel will notice there's a embedded Power Pivot workbook in here and it will reach out and try to send that over to the Power Pivot for SharePoint server or the analysis services for SharePoint server and have that analysis service instance reference this book. So as I click a different slicer, I can see the numbers are changing. And if I want to reassure myself that what's happening is what I want to happen. I can actually come over here and look, I'm looking at the uh, Power Pivot instance on SPDB3. And if I refresh this, I should see that, yep, sure enough, an analysis services database has been loaded in here, and that's the data that I'm actually using. I can also trace the database as I make these changes. And then again, see that, yep, sure enough, you know, I have queries coming across to this database as I am clicking slicers. So at this point, um, I have a basic Power Pivot up and running. Now, there are some things that Power Pivot for SharePoint can't do unless I do more configuration and embed it into the SharePoint environment. It can't do scheduled refreshes. There are the BISM data connection type isn't going to be there, but, but certainly it can handle basic uh, Power Pivot workbooks being in the farm now with just that little configuration, which I think is a, just a fantastic option to have.